thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Thank you for spending your Sunday, uh, Monday afternoon. I lose sense of time in this news business. Monday afternoon here uh, with me. Thank you, Anurag, for all the kind words you said and for the opportunity to address Stutz stalwarts from uh, the television, and television news, and other television media industry who are all here in this audience today. So it is a great privilege to be called to give a keynote before such a August gathering. I feel completely ill-equipped. Um, I will restrict myself to what I know, because in any case, uh, I have this habit of passing my judgment on everything every night. And since, I, since uh, the Almighty has been kind and given me an opportunity uh, to be the master of everything every night, I shall restrict myself to being specific. If you want to tune in to the Ornob who pontificates on everything, then you can join me at 9 o'clock on the news hour tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am here today, and as I was just coming up, I told uh, my dear friend Suhail Seth that the news in the Arushi verdict has just come out. I won't tell you what it is. You'll have to switch on my channel for it, not the channel that is necessarily sponsoring the event. I knew you'd do that anyway, but sorry, News X, don't mind. What do you talk about? What is the media industry about? The media industry is here as an industry that seeks your attention. A media industry is an industry that seeks your mind space, that seeks your time, that wants your recall and which at the same time, while achieving all of the four things I've just mentioned to you, also does not lose your respect. Ask yourself here today, what have been your talking points? If you've tweeted, what have you tweeted about in the last eight days? Let's take eight days, not even a year. What have you talked about? If you've gone to a party, what have you spoken about? If you have a point of view on, what is it on? Is it on comedy nights with Kapil? Or is it on Snoop Kate? Is it on the 10.30 p.m. serial on a GEC? Or is it on the Tarun Tejpal sordid affair? What are you talking about this Monday afternoon? As of this second, what are people watching? What are they checking their phones on? What are they going on Twitter about? Ladies and gentlemen, they are only and only and primarily and completely only going on the news. News drives this country. It will drive it much more. And in an unabashed manner, I shall make a case for you today. I am here this afternoon to make a case for my television news industry. I am here to seek your support. Because I begin on the premise that if this was the year of the Lord 2023, if we were sitting in a room in November 2023, we should not look back and say that in 2013, we undermined the TV news industry. We ran it down. We gave up on it. We began to minutely look at the number of exact footfalls or GRPs. My friend Rajanayak who walks in, as of this afternoon, would say my GRP is 100 times yours. I'd say to Raj, my impact is a thousand times yours. What do we seek? What do you seek as media buyers and planners and people who measure and marketeers and salespersons? You seek impact. I think you seek three things in this industry. And before I go into the details, in 2004, when I left NDTV, I was told it's the greatest mistake I have made in my professional career. We start at times now, and there's a gentleman here who heads BARC Parto Das Gupta, who I had the privilege of working with when we started times now. We know what was the summer of 2004, Partho. We know what 2005 was like. If I had asked you in 2004, is there an alternative possible to NDTV? You'd say, absolutely not. NDTV has just started. We have too many channels. I was always told the reason you're making a mistake by straying into the TV news industry to start another channel is back because there isn't enough space. The market will not grow. I have always, always, always rejected that prism. 
And my contention to you today is not to make the same mistake in 2013 that people did when they wrote off the possibility of another news channel starting in 2005. Three things are what you seek. You seek flexibility. When you measure an industry for growth, I want you to close your eyes and ask yourself, Arnob's making a case for the TV news industry. On what basis is he making the case? I'm making the case on the basis of three things. The first is attention. The TV news industry gets a greater pie of your attention and forever will than any part of the TV business anywhere, including GECs. Secondly, you want impact. You want deep and lasting impact. The TV news channel industry gives you impact that no channel, no regional channel, no GEC, no other channel in any genre can ever get or hope to achieve. And I will validate all these three cases. The third thing which you seek when you invest your time and faith and energy and perhaps your money in an industry is that you hope that it will have scalability, that it might be able to grow in the future, that the penny you put in today may be a pound tomorrow and that your investment today, both in terms of your faith and your money, will be worth it five or ten years down the line. Number one, attention. I give you the example of 2611, which is always told to me, we are, heading the, we are heading towards yet another anniversary of 2611, two days from now. Someone said to me, what is the greatest challenge in the TV news industry? I said, the greatest challenge in the TV news industry is to ensure that we continue to hold the attention when there are no spikes. But I will never forget those days in 2611. It was a seven-day non-stop broadcast from beginning to end. I think you remember what was going on there. We had your attention, and we did, we did it with a small team. At times now, this is the team that we did 2611 with. I counted the numbers before I came to you. We had 11 reporters, 11 reporters, six of them relatively inexperienced. We had three outside broadcast vans. There were no live view units, there were no wireless units. Three outside broadcast vans. There were only 22 people on the production floor, 22 people, 13 of them relatively new recruits, and nine of them experienced people on 24-hour shifts. The reason I'm saying putting these numbers out to you is because I want this room to realize what passion really is. 22 people on a production floor, 13 of them inexperienced, nine of them reasonably experienced, and one senior producer. Three anchors alone, two besides me, we work long shifts, six people on input, total of 10 desk people. The total number of people, ladies and gentlemen, who brought out the magnificent, wonderful, objective, and path-breaking, globally respected broadcast of 2611 was sitting in a newsroom that is less than half a kilometer from where we are sitting today. There were 55 of them in all, just 55 of them, and they held not your attention. Out of those 55 people, 30 to 35 people were relatively new recruits. We know the recruitment strategy of Times Now has always been to hope that the younger generation proves it. I'm telling you this today because if you have faith in these kind of people, they can change the global news industry, not just the Indian news industry. 55 people pulled out that broadcast. I can challenge any network head anywhere on the globe to produce a broadcast of that scale and size with this kind of experience. We knew how to hold your attention. We did not take advertising breaks. We committed ourselves to objective and fearless journalism. Reporters on the field did not have bulletproof vests. They simply had passion. So point number one, ladies and gentlemen, there is no channel in the world apart from a good news channel that can hold your attention. Question number two is that of deep impact. As someone from the TV industry or someone from the media industry, I am sure that you are looking for deep impact. Where can you match the impact of the heady summer and fiery winter of the year 2010? Do you remember where you were on the night the CWG scam broke? Do you remember what happened in this country between May 2010 and January 15, 2011? leading up to the Prime Minister's press conference on the 8th of February 2011, will any country in the world and any media, any house, 
We talk about the Murdoch scandal in the United Kingdom and people make films about the Watergate scandal in the US, but tell me, ladies and gentlemen, in which country, in which medium, which group of journalists has produced massive investigative journalism on television, holding the entire nation's attention in an extremely difficult regulatory environment such as 2G, CWG, Devas ISRO, Adarsh, Aircell Maxis, and the IPL scam, right up to the arms gate that we are doing in 2013. What is the time and attention that the doyens of the television industry and the doyens of the media industry have given to congratulate the group of journalists who are shaping the India of today and the India of tomorrow? As you leave this room, I want you to ask yourself, which industry in the world produces such deep impact? Not just into changing what India is like, but to changing the future of India and your children and my children, the kind of India we will inherit. How much time and attention do we give to that industry? How many GRPs can measure the impact of that industry, ladies and gentlemen? How do you measure the footfall at 4 o'clock and say the TV news industry is dead? It's not dead. It's rising. And it will rise 10 years from now when the Indian television news industry becomes as powerful as deep and hopefully as well-funded as the cable news industry is in America. Let's not say that we missed the bus. We gave up on it too early. The third point that I want to make is simply that of scalability. Let me share some numbers with you. I'm sure Anurag wouldn't know this. I take a question. Do you know how much is spent on producing the content? Partho might. We've done business plans together. How much is spent producing the content of a news channel in India? How much is spent? What is the average spend on programming, on editorial, of an Indian national news channel? You'd be stunned. You would be absolutely stunned. Indian news channels at a national level will, on an average, spend anywhere between $2 million to $8 million a year. That's all. Big news channels will spend between $2 million to a maximum of $8 million a year. That's all spent in creating the programming that grips the nation. When people say nation wants to know, which is an adjective, by the way, I have never used, but which has been thrust upon me. I have graciously accepted it. I'd say to them, the nation wants to know, but the nation wants to know only at that kind of money. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you today, you, ladies and gentlemen, are the people who drive our industry. One of the reasons, the selfish reasons, I told Anurag, I will come and I said to him, I will make a pitch for my industry. And I hope I get some belief out of this room. Two to eight million dollars. Do you know how much Fox News spends? Do you know what the average spend of Fox News in the year 2012 is? As per the Pew report, it's 732 million dollars. CNN competes, they have annual spending estimates, $698 million spent on CNN. I dare say today that the money spent on producing a good Indian news channel is probably the salary of three or four anchors or maybe less in New York. And that's the brutal reality. But before we criticize the news channels, the case I am building for you here today, and I will now talk of the future, I am not a person who cribs. The only time I crib is for 90 minutes every night. I crib my heart out. Some people say he must be a very frustrated man. He lets his anger out on everyone every night. Well, I am, but this is what I am angry about, ladies and gentlemen. We have such potential. There is no country, no democracy, no group of young and passionate people, committed, good, hardworking, who can be built to a global level. But what time and attention are we spending to it? See, today, if you give an Indian broadcaster 10 to 20 million dollars, I can assure you he will beat CNN and BBC hollow. He will certainly be more exciting than Al Jazeera. This is the fact. But are we doing that? At what scale are we spending? And what scale we spend at depends on what scale we earn. I am not asking for the top dollar that GECs command. But I'm certainly asking you today to consider what the value of the impact, attention, and scalability of TV news is. You will ask me, Arnob, you are biased. You have too much of a vested interest in TV news. I have, but I'll present three reasons why I'm not only biased. One 
is the fact of funding. I'm telling you the funds that we are operating on. Secondly, there is a captive audience in India. In 2004, if we were asked how many people speak and write English, let me take the example only of English news channels, it would be 50 to 55 million people. Today, that number is 200 to 250 million. In other words, in simply eight years, in eight phenomenal years, the number of people who are consuming English media or are potential consumers of English media has grown by 400%. In which country in the world do you have a captive audience and a building demography as that? And I'm only talking here of English news. The second reason I'm making the pitch for India being the center of the global news revolution, one is of language and the other is of people. On an odd estimate, there are about 10,000 fully qualified, extremely competent news persons, producers, technicians in the Indian television news market. They are not the most expensive. We have the manpower, we have the democracy. Now we have the language. Now what we need here is simply a change of mindset. And I hope that you will understand where I'm coming from. But most of all, the reason I'm asking for your support is because of our ability to make deep and lasting change. What is deep and lasting change? Let me give you an example. On the 23rd of December 2011, we were sitting around in our newsroom, it was before Christmas, and we were told that there is no story on the list till somebody told me a story has sprung. And the story was coming from a stringer in a district called Banda in Uttar Pradesh. The story was this, ladies and gentlemen, and I appeal today to your conscience more than anything else. The story was this, a 17-year-old girl had been repeatedly raped at the house of her employer, who was a member of the Legislative Assembly from the Bahujan Samaj Party, and I'm talking before the last election, so the BSP was in power in UP. So a 17-year-old girl got raped there repeatedly. She managed to escape from captivity. This is one year before Nirbhaya, and certainly two years before this Tarun Tejpal affair. She managed to escape. When she went, she ran to the police station. When she went to the police station, she told the SHO that I had been repeatedly raped for over a week by this man. And when the SHO realized who the man is, he called the man. The man told the SHO, put cases of theft against this girl. And this girl, instead of getting justice, was locked up and tortured in the police station where she went seeking justice. I am not hoping to only strike an emotional chord with you here today. I want to tell you that if it had not been for the one week of relentless, aggressive, and total news coverage, which was done by Times Now and all the other channels, that girl would not have got justice, that MLA would not have faced justice, he would not have been put behind bars. These are calls that we are taking. We are at an inflection point, ladies and gentlemen, in the news industry of the, nowhere in the world is a news industry changing as it is in India, and nowhere in the world is the country changing as fast as India. You need to decide where and who you're going to support. Now, let me tell you the future. This is my estimate of the future. And if there are, I know there are a lot of business heads in this room who understand business better than me. I am a generalist, but I will tell you where I think the news industry is growing, and I hope I have your unqualified attention. I believe that the Indian news industry is, as of this minute, we are 20 years behind America in terms of chronology. America has had a lead. When you look at America in the 60s, and if you watch the broadcast when JFK died, 1963 were almost as evolved as our broadcasts were 10 years back. They have a history of broadcasting. Yet I think we have played catch up. We are 20 years behind America in terms of chronology. We are 15 years behind America in the use of technology. The technology they use in their news broadcast is far more advanced. That's because they have the resources, the money, and the exposure to that technology. We are only 10 years behind them in terms of programming. Only 10 years. And if you look at the evolution of Indian news in India, the way in which we are being able to both manage opinion and have deep impact, those of you who know more about the American news industry know the power of cable news in America. But do you also know that cable news in America attracts far less audiences than local news, and even lesser audiences than network news? So cable news in America gets the least amount of viewership. What it manages to get 
is that it manages to get people who watch for longer. So here's the case I'm building for you. When I say we are 20 years behind America chronologically, here's the trend. What is happening in America today? In America, the time spent on local news is, say, 12 minutes. The time spent on network news is 12 minutes. The time spent on cable is 25 to 30 minutes. The number of people who watch local news in America is about 71%. The number of people who watch network news in America is about 60%. The number of people who watch cable news in America is about 37 or 38 percent. But that 37 or 38 per percent holds the maximum attention. Those people watch for the longest. They are the opinion. Those are the shows anchored by people who holds the, hold the nation's attention every night. And in fact, that is where the top dollar also is, and that is where the investments lie. Now, look at what is happening in the Indian television news market. Exactly. Exactly the same thing is happening. I know there are a lot of people out here who believe that vernacular is the future. Who all of, a lot of people who believe that national network news will never take off in India. I predict here that if you look at the trends very, 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 very carefully, we are following the same curve of growth that American television news has. In 2023, we have a really solid chance of being the first evolved television news market after America. I have already told you three reasons of scalability, production, human resources, talent, passion, why I believe that the TV news industry has a great future. What I'm telling you is that you are all the masters of the TV news business. Please go back and if you just compare the broad trend of American television, 1970 onwards till now, and if you look at the trend of Indian television news in the last 10 years, you will say that these two curves are dying to catch up. In 2023 or 2025, we'll be at the same level. I request you in this August gathering to support that change because I believe that the next one or three years is most critical for news television. If news television does not have your support, if you do not believe in the impact, if you only want to talk about what happened on the news, what happened on Times Now, but if you do not have faith in it, if you still compare television news in the same way with the same objective standards that you apply to a music channel, then I think you are making a big mistake. And forgive me if I'm speaking too straight today. I have no way of changing the way I speak at 9 or tonight. I am telling you here today, you are making a mistake if you're comparing a news channel to a music channel or a news channel to a GEC. It drives the attention differently. It is growing very, 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 very fast. And I think you need to really look at that. The other thing, and I'll wrap up on this, Anurag. I don't want to take too much of your time. The use of technology by Indian TV news industry is unprecedented. I'll give you one example. In the last American election, as an experiment, I deployed 28 American reporters. This was just as an experiment. Besides changing my accent, I didn't do anything else. 28 American reporters? Why did I do it? I simply wanted, I had an option of switching on to ABC or to CBS. The reason I kept 28 American reporters was just to see and understand if sitting here in Mumbai, you can objectively bring together a group of people who maybe not to the standards of the American networks, but to a reasonably understandable level can have a conversation and bring a broadcast to the Indian at a global level. I have lived in those times when we carried a camera and I remember my first trip to Patinam Titta in Sabarimalai carrying a camera, which was a gigantic 15 kilos heavy and bringing back the tape and waiting in the Doordarshan office to uplink for waiting for four hours to uplink two minutes and then having somebody in the scooter go to, from Prasar Bharti to Pranoy's office and then calling Pranoy saying the tape has reached. When the Anna movement happened, it was a surreal experience for me because we were also reporting on the India Day Parade in New York. And suddenly we had deployed four American reporters at the India Day Parade. I called them and I said that, would you please redeploy? Rather than the India Day Parade, I want you to cover the pro-Anna demonstrations that are happening in New York. Sitting here in my office in Lower Parel, I was connecting what was happening in Janpath out here with what was happening in Times Square. It was a surreal experience. It is waiting to happen. We will be the center of the global news industry. And I predict one last thing. When the digital revolution comes, I am waiting like hell for the digital revolution. Because I know that when the digital revolution comes, as I said to somebody, it's not like people will watch Sherlock Holmes on their tablet. They won't watch 
one of your cereals, Raj, on their smartphone. They won't watch. Statistically, it is proven, Raj. They will not watch your cereal on the smartphone. You know what they will watch? They will watch the news. In America and in the UK. I take America as a standard, a gold standard here of the way TV has evolved. In America, I don't know what the figures are, smartphone penetration should be today, as of my estimates, anywhere between 40 to 50 percent. Tablet penetration should be reaching upwards of 20 percent. Statistically, it is proven that smartphone users, 51 percent of it in America, two years back, use it for news. On tablets, 60 percent of the people are using their tablets for news. This is as per latest estimates. Are we going to be far behind? Do we estimate that when the, we have this audience with access to tablets and smartphones, that they will be watching serials on tablets and smartphones? Absolutely not. They will be watching the news. So the one, one group which actually will gain leadership, enjoy attention, will be news. I am here before you today, this Monday afternoon, not anchoring on the breaking news story, which should drive me back, but here to speak to you here today is because everything proves Everything absolutely proves the big wave is going to happen in Indian TV news. It is going to happen very soon and starting today, I hope that all of you here today will look upon TV news industry as something to invest your faith, your time and your attention on. Thank you very much.